share, leave us a comment with a question about what we should cover next. We want to know what we should cover next. What questions are you having trouble on during your studies? Commercial lines, boiler and machinery. This is gonna be helpful for those who are taking the property and casualty test. This test is required for many different licenses and we hope to be very helpful to you. Should you need some free practice questions, go to majoradjusters.com. You can also check out blogs on quick ways to get your money making abilities going even before your license. Let's talk about boiler and machinery. What is boiler and machinery insurance and why is it important to be on the exam? You see, most people don't know that you have insurance coverage for commercial properties too that need coverage. The International Risk Management Institute notes that an object is a boiler and machinery insurance terms for equipment or machinery. So they call it boiler and machinery, but it's just equipment. That's what you need to remember. Here are examples of an object that could be covered under a boiler and machinery or equipment and machinery breakdown insurance policy, including rooftops, uh, HVAC, uh, manufacturing equipment, a pressure vessel, or the actual boiler itself. The breakdown of a critical piece of machinery has the potential to wreak havoc across multiple faucets of an operation. Two words will sum up boiler and machinery. That is collateral damage. That means one item may be leaked water, maybe a machine, a steam machine, and it caused damage to something else. For example, during a lightning storm, the roof of a food processing plant is struck. The company's HVAC equipment is housed on the building's roof and is destroyed. This leads to a chain reaction with over a million of finished product spoiling and being discarded. In a company's boiler room, a pressure valve suddenly explodes. The heating system is damaged as a result of that explosion. In turn, that leads to damage outside of the property, and that created a near half a million dollar loss of perishable goods. In a company's boiler room, a pressure valve suddenly explodes. The heating system is damaged as a result of the explosion. In turn, that led to a near half million dollar loss of perishable goods. That is the inventory that business may have sold in order to make a profit. The International Risk Management Institute further defines equipment breakdown insurance as coverage for loss due to mechanical or electrical breakdown of nearly any type of equipment, including photocopiers and computers. Equipment breakdown insurance is increasingly replacing traditional boiler and machine insurance, in part simply because the title is more deceptive, descriptive, I should say, for the coverage provided. You see, in insurance, they want to keep you the policyholder ambiguous to what is actually going on. Now that you have folks like myself, which public adjusting really point out and police the insurance companies, we show insurance companies where they have misled and we educate policyholders on that. Equipment breakdown insurance has much more meaning than boiler and machinery too because technology changes. So recall insurance has been around for a really long time. So you may see some ancient terms and wording. Also, today's equipment breakdown policies typically provide slightly broader coverage than traditional BM policies. That's the boiler and machinery. And they usually do not use the specialized terminology found in traditional BM policies. Okay, let's do a self check. What type of loss would not be covered by the business owner's policy? We have another question that will come up at the end. So watch until the end to get the other question. What type of loss would not be covered? Our practice questions, we always like to highlight the answer when you first see the question because we don't want you looking at the wrong answer. It actually helps you just identify the right answer right away while you're taking the exam. Commercial lines is next. 
you have a business owner's policy under commercial lines. So we're going to go over what the BOP is, what the uses are, the coverages, the commercial umbrella, which is great for business owners to capture everything. Just think of an umbrella, the advantages and what the requirements are. Your business owner po owner's policy, it includes both commercial property and general liability coverages. It bundles property insurance and liability coverage in one handy package. Uses of the business owner policy or the BOP, some insurers issue policies on standard insurance service offices forms, while others may use their own proprietary forms. A typical business owner policy combines liability insurance with property insurance. It covers the expenses of the loss or damage assets. It will also cover legal expenses, lawsuit fees, settlement costs, lawyer payments, etc. It's really good to have. Thumbs up to those who have it. Here's what's covered under the box. Buildings located at premises described in the declarations, including machinery and equipment that is permanently installed. Tenant improvements. Business property located in covered buildings. In the event that you are a business that may hold someone's stuff to maybe be worked on, maybe a computer, or maybe you're moving furniture for a customer, that property belongs to somebody else, but maybe in your hands. So if it gets damaged, there's coverage for that. And so that's the glass of the building. There's usually some very low limits to that. General liability coverage, a building owner's policy includes two thirds liability coverage, bodily injury and property damage liability, personal and advertising injury liability. If you say something against a competitor that isn't true, the advertising injury liability will kick in for coverage. The competitor will have to prove it to not be true. The competitor also has to prove that it was printed. So maybe it was printed in the newspaper or maybe on social media. That is an advertisement and it caused somebody harm. So they do have to show that it caused them harm. If somebody didn't read it and it was still printed, but it caused you no business injury, there may not be anything to cover. Your coverage under your BOP, it also provides certain coverages via exam, um, <coughs> more coverages under your business owner's policy. It also provides certain coverages via exceptions to exclusions. Examples are contract liability, host liquor liability, you'll learn about that later, and damage to rented policies. A BOP includes medical payment coverage, which pays for medical expenses incurred by individuals who have been injured as a result of a business activity. For example, you may have to make payments to a customer who had a hot drink spilled on them. That would be medical payments in the result of just doing your normal business activities. Business interruption coverage is also known as business income coverage. It protects your business if for some reason a natural disaster or other covered events interrupts the ability to conduct business. If the business has to shut down, this coverage will replace lost revenues. That's a great coverage to have for, let's say, a soda shop that didn't have customers after a tornado come came through. Well, that coverage is going to help provide the income that the store would have had had that tornado not hit. Coverages under the BOP continue. Additional coverages are the extra expense coverage. That's the extra generators that you're going to need to rent for opening up the shop or keeping the shop running after that tornado. Civil authority coverage. Well, now they may tell you you have to actually close your shop. Maybe it's the pandemic. Valuable papers would just be what they sound like accounts, excuse me, accounts receivables coverage. So maybe you were expecting money from one of your customers, maybe a catering service, but uh, all of your catering dried up because you didn't have any weddings. Um, again, maybe a pandemic happened and prevent the weddings and you thought that money was coming in. So you ordered your supplies, the food and things of that nature, but there's going to be no wedding. So that would be covered. Additional acquired property, you may rent a facility to uh, actually uh, allow you to run your business 
or maybe um, you need more tables and chairs. Interruption of computer operations. It goes along with just being interrupted, your POS system and mold coverage. So that is a lot that's covered under your additional BOP coverages. Now let's go over, for example, excuse me, let's do a self-check. What coverages are not found under the BOP? What coverages are not found under the BOP? Again, we like to go in and immediately let you know what the answer is because the better you recognize the answer, the better you'll do. Again, my name is Abahi. I run Major Adjusters Training and we do have free practice questions available for you at majoradjusters.com. That link can be found in the description. And we do love comments. So if you're still listening, go ahead and like, share, leave us a comment with a question about what we should cover next. We want to know what we should cover next. Best of luck on that test.